Hey guys, REITs were first introduced in the Philippines in 2009, but it wasn't until 10 years later in 2019 that the first REIT was launched. Currently, there are only 8 publicly traded REITs in the Philippines, pero I'm sure madadagdagan pa yan. In no particular order, those 8 REITs are a REIT sponsored by Ayala Land, which is one of the largest real estate developers in the country. Its portfolio consists of office buildings and shopping malls such as the 30th in Pasig, and Ayala North Exchange in Makati. DDMPR, sponsored by Double Dragon Properties Corporation or DD, which is a real estate company that focuses on developing community malls and office buildings. The assets can be found in DD Meridian Park in Pasay. FILRT, sponsored by Philinvest Development Corporation or FLI, which develops residential, commercial, and office properties. Their tenants are primarily global BPO companies such as Accenture, and some of their properties can be found in Northgate Cyber Zone in Alabang. RCR, sponsored by Robinson's Land Corporation or RLC. It has a diverse portfolio of properties including residential, office, commercial, and industrial developments. Kalat-kalat ang buildings nila in Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. MREIT, sponsored by Mega World Corporation or MEG. They develop residential, commercial, and office properties. Notable properties are Eastwood City and McKinley Hill in Taguig. CREIT, sponsored by Citicor Renewable Energy Corporation, which is a renewable energy company with a healthy mix of operating assets and solutions in the renewable energy, water, and biomass spaces. Ito rin ang first renewable energy REIT in the country and its primary power plant is located in Clark, Pampanga. V-REIT, which is sponsored by Vistaland or VLL, a leading integrated property developer and the largest home builder in the country. Among the properties in their portfolio are two PESA registered office buildings in BGC and Molino. P-REIT, the latest addition to our pool of REITs, Premier Island Power REIT has two sponsors namely SI Power Corporation and Camotes Island Power Generation Corporation. Their assets are located in Cebu and Siquijor. So this video will serve as an introduction to REITs. We'll be talking about the top things you should consider when investing in REITs. Pero disclaimer lang na hindi ito comprehensive list. Pero for me, these are the things I'm looking for in the prospectus, especially after my announcement na may idadagdag or may bagong IPO na REIT in our stock market. One of the very first things I consider are looking at the sponsors or the management team. Out of the 8 REITs in the PSE, anim lang sa kanila ang may sponsor na publicly listed din in the stock market or publicly tradable din. If that matters to you, then you can use this information. In terms po of the management, hindi lang track record ang tinitingnan ko. Sure, a good track record in the past few years or maybe the decade is essential. After all, we're investing in the stock market to grow our wealth, di ba? Pero I also try to look at the company's values and practices. Are the executives decent people? Hindi ko naman kailangan i-research isa-isa. But knowing a bit of information about those people at the top, yung mga executives would be helpful if you're trying to uphold your principles when investing. Ngayon, kung purely objective ka naman sa pag invest mo, then you don't need to worry about this. Okay, before I get carried away, let's step back a bit and talk about the basics of REITs. Ano nga ba ang Real Estate Investment Trust? In simplest terms, a REIT is just a group of people who come together to buy big buildings, siguro a hotel, a shopping mall, or apartment, tapos ipaparenta nila yan sa smaller businesses and then they receive rent. Simple, di ba? Tapos the rent they receive will be given to the sponsor. And most of the time, if not always, merong ibang buildings na consider yung sponsor na ilagay dun sa REIT. When this happens, we call it a property infusion or a property for share swap. When the company infuses more assets or adds more building into the REIT, the REIT will now issue or create more additional shares para dun sa sponsor, which inevitably will increase the sponsor's ownership in the REIT. This means magkakaroon ng dilution yung other shareholders like you and me kung meron ka ng REIT na yon. It could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Depende kung anong gagawin ng REIT and ano yung magiging performance ng stock price niya. Paano masabi? Kasi if the assets added or the assets infused into the REITs portfolio will increase its overall value, it could actually lead to an increase in the share price, benefiting all shareholders, dividend investor command, or capital appreciation yung habol mo. Also guys, when asset infusion happens, the REIT is said to have grown inorganically. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Basically, in a REIT, there are two types of sources of revenue. First, organic sources or rental income. And second, inorganic sources such as property sales or property acquisitions. A healthy mix of both organic and inorganic sources is good and beneficial for the overall stability and growth of the REIT. Actually, yung two types of sources, hindi naman unique yan sa mga REITs lang. So for example, Apple is not a REIT, pero its sources of revenue can also be classified as organic, such as sales from their products, and inorganic, like when they bought Beats last July 2014. Moving forward, the sales of Beats will benefit the parent company, Apple.
Ngayon, we can talk about the government entity called SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission. They require all types of REITs, kahit property REIT man yan, office REIT, energy REIT. They require that they distribute 90% of their profits to their shareholders. Personally po, attracted ako sa REITs because of the dividends that they give out to the shareholders. Specifically, the percentage of the dividend or the dividend yield. For sure, may mahahanap ka sa stock market na mas mataas yung dividend yield. Last time I checked, parang 10% plus yung GMA7 na dividend. Pero hindi ako attracted doon. Bakit? Let me explain. Generally speaking, the annual dividend yield of a REIT is about 4 to 6 percent. Happy na ako doon kasi personally, uh, anything above 6 percent is too good to be true or masyado nang risky. Ang vision ko kasi sa mga REITs ko ay buy and then hold, tapos receive my dividends and then reinvest those dividends into those companies. Mainly to take advantage of compounding. Last 2022, my passive income from dividends was about 3,000 pesos per month. Check this video to find out more. Not too bad in my opinion, di ba? Considering na five, almost 5 years na ako nag invest sa stock market. Pero it's still nowhere near my target amount for passive income, kaya hindi ko pa wini-withdraw. Patuloy lang ng patuloy ng pag-compound. Another reason is because they offer two sources of income. Bukod sa dividends for passive income, syempre meron din capital appreciation or potential for capital appreciation kasi nga stock pa rin naman ito. This is the main reason why REITs are considered a hybrid asset. A REIT is the overlapping area between a real estate property and stocks or equities. Ngayon, kung naghahanap ka ng other investment vehicles to further diversify your investment portfolio, siguro may stocks ka na, may bonds ka na rin, may MP2, cryptocurrencies, or maybe a tangible asset like a, an apartment, I think REITs will be a good addition to your portfolio because it will give you more peace of mind in terms of diversification. That said, hindi lang asset diversification ang benefit ng pag-invest sa REITs. Going deeper into the asset itself, i-consider mo naman ang REIT na may first, diversified properties, and second, diversified sources of revenue or sources of rental income to reduce risk and increase stability. Don't simply look at the number of properties they manage. For example, a REIT that manages 15 shopping malls is considered less diversified versus another REIT that manages maybe 5 shopping malls lang pero may 5 hospitals siya and then 5 hotels. Mas diversified kung ganon. Paulit-ulit ko nang sinasabi throughout this video, pero REITs invest in different types of properties such as office buildings, shopping malls, apartments, industrial spaces, land, hospitals, machineries, etc. Consider investing in a REIT with a portfolio of properties that you are interested in. Yung mas madali mo maintindihan. You can also think of this as another way of diversification. Ang pwedeng strategy mo dito is, instead of choosing two REITs na nasa same industry, for example, MREIT tapos PhilRT, pwede mong i-drop yung isa and then choose instead another REIT that is outside of that industry or the retail office space industry. In our case, energy lang naman yung other industry ng REIT. So palitan mo siya ng PREIT or ng CREIT. In this way, and guys, idea lang naman to, you spread out your money across different industries. Up to you. By diversifying your REIT investments this way, you will also benefit from having different investments in different locations. Going back to the example earlier, kung MREIT at PhilRT lang yung hawak mo, then you're simply investing in cities. It doesn't matter kung office space man yun, or shopping mall, or hotel. Nasa lugar pa rin yan na magbe-benefit lang kung maraming tao. On the other hand, Kung nag-invest ka naman sa CREIT, whose rental income is independent of foot traffic, ibig sabihin marami mang tao o wala mang tao, may income pa rin, may rental income pa rin, then I would consider that collection of REITs, for example, MREIT plus CREIT, I would consider this as more diversified, more holistic approach into investing. Again, idea lang to, up to you pa rin kung anong risk tolerance mo and kung saan industry ka mas comfortable, mas optimistic. Occupancy rates give an idea of how well or how bad the properties are being leased out. Example, if an office building has 10,000 square meters of GLA or gross leasable area, pero 7,000 square meters lang ang currently leased out, then the occupancy rate is 70%. Higher occupancy rates indicate a stronger demand not only for the property, but also for the location, for the vicinity in general, and the higher potential for rental income. Para sa akin po, 90% is the absolute minimum occupancy rate. Anything less than that, non-negotiable para sa akin. Hindi ko nababasahin yung prospectus, hindi na ako magiging interested sa pag-invest. 95% is decent and is normal, pero of course, 100% is the ideal or the gold standard. Take note, I said ideal kasi suwertihan lang na makakuha ka or makahanap ka ng rate na may 100% occupancy rate across all their properties. 
when I create REIT review videos, I usually take a look at the occupancy rate first because I know this is the information that um, potential investors want to know immediately. Or maybe not immediately, but it is one of the most critical information that they need to know. Kung may REITs ka na and you still want to diversify your portfolio even further, say with a business, check this out. 